Stay with us in the studio. Let me turn to our guest. Uh, I want to bring in Nong Hong in the conversation. She's a executive director of the Institute for China-America Studies here in Washington. Dr. Hong, welcome. Uh, what, in your opinion, is Trump's end game here? Why, why is he making these provocative statements about China? Well, I think China's reaction this time is very different and stronger than the reaction based on the December 2nd the call between uh, Trump and the Chai Ing-wen. I think, as far as I understand, Trump's uh, remark yesterday is somehow uh, destroy China's confidence or China's hope when we still assume that Trump's remark or phone call with China is based on his lack of knowledge or lack of experience when dealing with Asian policy, especially China policy. But his remark yesterday shows that he's actually mean that he's going to maybe use the one China policy uh, used as a bargaining chip towards China in terms of dealing with China, many other issues they want from China, such as the uh, currency issues and the trade issue and those North Korea issues. That's how I understand. Sean? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I want to pick up on that. Do you see any way that he could use this as a bargaining chip? I mean, China has been very clear about this, what it means to their sovereignty, uh, their integral uh, operations. If he goes in and tries to use something like this as a bargaining chip, at best, Analysts, China watchers say it is naive. At worst, it's dangerous. I agree with you. I think both China and Taiwan as well, and also the United States, they all benefit from the status quo from this one China policy, although they might have different interpretations, slightly and deliberately different interpretation based on one uh, China policy. So if China wants to use this one China policy as a bargaining chip, they will actually destroy the fundamental belief between China and may might also have some negative impact for coming U.S.-China relations. And um, as we understand that we, we use normally we use cornerstone a foundation to interpret the China-U.S. relation. So there's no way I can see that Trump might actually benefit from being tough and use the China policy, one China policy, as something that he can bargain with China. Nong, how do you see this playing out once Trump is inaugurated? And how concerned are you that the relationship between Washington and Beijing could be damaged, greatly damaged, because of his comments? Well, we got a lot of chance to talk to American scholars how they view the coming U.S.-China relations. We don't get a very certain answer. Everyone's telling us, let's wait and see. I think China has been very, uh, have a very good hope and then to, to have a very uh, thoughtful, showing a very strong uh, willingness to see uh, maybe a very profiled uh, relationship, good relationship between China and the United States. So we do have a lot of hope. And hopefully this remark actually came out yesterday might not actually be over-exaggerated by both countries. But it's interesting because there's no way this is an accident because after President-elect Trump had the phone conversation with the leader of Taiwan, the Obama administration made a point of sitting down with him, talking to him about the one China principle, how important it is. It goes back to 1979 when uh, the Soviets were involved in Afghanistan, and it really connected the two countries. The bedrock, as you said, he seems to be ignoring any kind of logic, any kind of information, and really could do long-term harm to an, an agreement between the world's two largest economies. Well, he's a businessman. Maybe many of his mindset are actually driven by his business way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But hopefully he have a very good team on uh, uh, creating his Asian, especially China policy, which might help him to uh, return back to the more rational track uh, in terms of viewing the future China relations and U.S.-China policy. All right, we'll leave it there. Nong Hong, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. And Sean Caleb, thank you to you as well.